Welcome to Triviago. Ideal gases are theoretical gases composed of randomly moving, non-interacting particles. Examples are oxygen, hydrogen, and carbon dioxide. And first, let's go to Boyle's laws. Boyle's law states the inverse relationship of pressure and volume, where the pressure of an ideal gas at a constant temperature increases as its container volume decreases. Chemist and physicist Robert Boyle published the law in 1662. This law can be seen in our daily lives. For example, the soda bottles that we drink from. Typically, when you open a soda bottle, we slowly turn the cap just a little bit to let some of the air escape before completely removing the lid. We do this because we've learned over time that twisting it open too fast causes it to fizz up and spill all over. This happens because the liquid is pumped full of carbon dioxide, causing it to bubble up as the CO2 makes its escape. When the soda bottle is filled, it is also pressurized. Our tires are also demonstrations of the law. While filling air in the tire of a vehicle, you will notice that the air pressure is kept to around 30 to 35 psi, pound force per square inch. As you push air into the tire, the increase in pressure reduces the volume of the air molecules by packing them together. The pressure in the pump has to always be higher than that which is inside the tire in order for more air to be pushed in. This is because the gas trying to escape is mixed into the fluid. So, when it does escape, it brings the foamy fluid out with it. Pressure in the bottle goes down, volume of a gas goes up, and you have yourself a mess to clean up. Here's an example problem. A balloon contains 15 liters of helium gas at 2.00 atm. The balloon rises to an altitude where the pressure is only 0.30 atm. What is the volume of the balloon at the higher altitude? First, we need to analyze the events of a period. Normally, helium is light and denser than air, which causes it to rise. As altitude increases, the pressure decreases, which is seen in the problem. Boyle's law states that volume increases as pressure decreases. Therefore, the value of volume in the specific attitude must be greater than 15.0 liters. To compute, we have to lay out what we already know. The initial volume V1 is given at 15.0 liters of helium gas. The initial pressure P1 is given at 2.00 atmospheres. As its attitude is increased, the pressure V2 is given at 0.30 atmospheres. Now, to find the volume V2, we substitute it in the given relationship formula. So the formula would then be P1V1 is equal to P2V2, which is equivalent to Boyle's law. And now we have to isolate V2 in order for us to solve the answer. And then the formula would be V2 is equal to P1V1 over P2. And now we will be substituting it, and once we arrive with the solution, the answer would then be 100 liters of helium gas. A simple experiment can help you get familiar with this law. But first, safety. Although we're not handling hazardous materials or chemicals in this experiment, it's always important to start every experiment by wearing your lab gown and your lab goggles. First step, draw air into a syringe and cover the end with your thumb. Second, with your thumb still on, gently push the plunger of the syringe down with your thumb. Record your findings in a notebook to keep track of what's happening. Remove your thumb on the syringe and feel the pressure as you change the volume. Pull out the plunger out of the top of the syringe and insert a mini marshmallow halfway down the tube. For our first test, place the plunger at the highest point of the syringe and cover the bottom opening with your finger. Next, press the plunger down and observe as the marshmallow shrinks inside. Remove your finger from the bottom of the syringe to release pressure. For a second test, place the plunger at the lowest possible point inside without touching the marshmallow. Once again, place your finger on the bottom opening and pull the plunger upwards. Notice as the marshmallow increases in size. For the second gas law, we will be talking all about Charles. Charles now states that for any mass of gas at constant pressure, its volume remains directly proportional to its Kelvin temperature. It was first published by French natural philosopher Joseph Louis Gay-Lussac in 1802. Although he credited the discovery to unpublished work from the 1780s by Jacques Charles, hence the name, 
Charles law can also be applied in our everyday lives. Take for example, if you play basketball outside on a cold day, your ball may shrink a little bit as the temperature decreases. This is because, according to Charles law, a gas takes up more space when it is warm. At low temperature, the gas molecules inside the balloon slows down and takes up less space and the balloon looks crumpled. When you leave that ball in a warm room or warm place, the molecules of gas inside it speeds up, spread out, and takes up more space in making it become bigger. Another example is a table tennis ball. If you play the sport, chances are you've come across the occasionally dented ball. You restore its roundness by popping it in a pan of warm water. The air inside the ball will expand as it heats up. The expanding air will push out the dent and restore the ball's roundness. Here's an example problem. A balloon is filled to a volume of 2.20 liters at a temperature of 22 degrees Celsius. The balloon is then heated to a temperature of 71 degrees Celsius. Find the new volume of the balloon. First, we need to analyze and identify the given values to know what we are looking for. We are given the 2.20 liters as T1, 22 degrees Celsius as T1, and 71 degrees Celsius as T2. So we are looking for the final volume which is said to be V2. After, both the given temperatures are supposed to be converted to Kelvin. This is done by adding the value to 273 Kelvin in both temperatures which gives us the answer 285 Kelvin and 344 Kelvin. And now, we are to rearrange the equation algebraically to solve for V2. First, we must isolate V2 by multiplying both sides by T2 and now we will be arriving with the answer or formula V2 is equal to T2 times V1 over T1. Now, substitute the known quantities into the equation and solve. Don't forget to round your final answer to three significant figures. And we will be arriving with 2.57 liters as our answer. One experiment can demonstrate the principles of Charles' law. Place the bottle with the balloon in its opening in the middle of the container with hot water. Observe. Now, place the bottle with the balloon in the basin with ice water. Observe changes. The last gas law we will be tackling is Gay-Lussac's law. Gay-Lussac's law is a law of an ideal gas that states that the pressure of a given mass of gas varies directly with the absolute temperature of the gas when the volume is kept constant. But how did Gay-Lussac's law came about? Joseph Louis Gay Lussac was a French professor who, in 1802, published the law of experiment. It states that the pressure of a given mass of a gas varies directly with the absolute temperature when the volume is kept constant. This law can be seen at work in real life when we heat food containers in microwaves. When heating food in closed containers, often a container will open to release the pressure. If it does not, opening the container will quickly release all the pent up pressure, which can be very dangerous because the gas inside the hot container may be superheated. This is why it is always best to open hot containers away from your body and face. Firing a bullet is also an example of Gay Lussac's law. When gunpowder burns, it creates a significant amount of superheated gas. The high pressure of the hot gas behind the bullet forces it out of the barrel of the gun. Here's an example problem. The gas in an aerosol can is under a pressure of 3 atmospheres at a temperature of 25 degrees Celsius. This danger is to dispose of an aerosol can by incineration. What would the pressure in the aerosol can be at a temperature of 845 degrees Celsius? To compute, we have to lay out what we already know. The initial pressure P1 is 3.0 atmospheres. The initial temperature T1 is 25 degrees Celsius, then converted to Kelvin by adding 273, which is 293 Kelvin. The change was recorded in a temperature T2 of 845 degrees Celsius, which is 1,118 in Kelvin after adding 273. To find the final pressure at 845 degrees Celsius, we must substitute it in the given relationship formula, which is P1 over T1 is equal to P2 over T2, which is equivalent to gay lussacs law. Now, we must isolate P2 by multiplying T2 on both sides, which leaves us with the formula P2 is equal to T2 multiplied by P1 divided by T1. The value of the pressure at 1,118 kelvins is 11.8. PM or atmospheres. A single experiment can help you get familiar with this law. Add just enough water to fill the surface of the flat glass container or plate. Slowly place the candle in the middle of the plate or bowl and make sure that it stays in place throughout the experiment. Light the candle with the matches or lighter. 
Hold the open end of the glass cup straight down and gently cover the candle in water with the glass cup. Make this a smooth, quick motion without bumping the candle. Observe the changes that are about to occur. So that's it for today, guys! We hope you learned a lot from our Gaslow episode. Thanks for watching!